Welcome back to the Crochet Kratos with my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we are going to do a rectangular knit blanket using Bernat Alizé Blanket Easy Yarn. So what this is, is the looping yarn which I'll show you in just a moment and what we're gonna be doing is going in a complete rectangle starting from the very beginning here and then growing outward. So I have a lot of information to share with you today. So I wrote a three page instructional thing that matches this particular tutorial. The question you will be, well how many loops do you start with in order to do a rectangle? So what I've done here on page number two is that I have the starting loops and ball counts. So what we have is that if you would like a child size it's seven loops and you use five balls and etc. So all of that information has been provided to you. If you'd like to customize it I also provided my formula here so that you can get the right uh, number of loops in order to start. The number of loops that you go across initially the first time will determine how it sizes up in the end. I've also given other helpful tips that are in this tutorial on what happens if you accidentally leave a loop behind, how to fix it without taking apart your work and then also if you're going to notice that maybe you accidentally leave a twist in here you can actually go all the way back down to the twist and then untwist it and then bring it all the way back without having to take apart all your work. So that's gonna be all covered in today's tutorial and let me just talk to you a little bit more about this design and uh, we're gonna get going from there. So in this tutorial we're gonna start off with a foundation loop and you're going to notice that we're going to be using uh, two loops to go into one at once it comes all the way around. You'll see that in here in the tutorial. The first time around is always different from the rest of them. The rest of them are always the same. The first one we have to concentrate on doing it right. Now originally I wanted to have every round done the same way but the problem is if you do it every round the same way especially for the beginning you'll end up with two massive holes. One right here and right here. So the starting foundation is different from the rest of them in order to keep that looking compact. You're also going to notice that this yarn is nice and uh, fluffy. It's also very light. You're gonna notice that you cannot see through this project so it's not a typical uh, other kind of brand that you may see out there. So when you're using all this you're going to notice that it's nice and dense but without the weight. So what I'm gonna do in today's tutorial is that we have some goals. So we're gonna get you started. I'm gonna show you how to untwist the twist. I'm gonna show you how what to do if you accidentally leave a loop behind and then I'm gonna show you how to do a bind off. So once I get you started I'm going to just have you go around and then at the end of the, of the tutorial I'm gonna be using the square video that I have already done because all of that information is exactly the same. So it's just a matter of getting yourself started and then you can enjoy this project all the more. So without enough chitter chatter let's get at her. Let's start off with the very beginning of this project. So let's just cover the loops just to say that I set it live on camera. So what we have is the child in wheelchair size. You'll start off with seven loops at the very beginning and that becomes your foundation. For the throw size that is adult and basically decor, you know when you're lying on the couch watching a movie kind of idea, you want nine loops. If you would like a full size twin blanket you want 52 loops as your foundation because it's almost double the width uh, when it, because of the sizing of the bed. And for queen size people are gonna ask me do a square version of that and it's 84 inches by 84. So this is not the right video for you to do that one with. So without further ado let's get started. No hooks, no needles and let's use our fingers and play. So we're gonna start off and I'm gonna say that I want eight chains to be completely empty. So what I want to do is that I wanna put my stitch marker on the first one and I wanna count eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. So eight is where I wanna start. So I wanna put another stitch marker there. So this shows me this is the center point of my rectangle. So now that I have my ends marked, stitch markers, I want you to switch these positions. So because I'm right handed I'm always gonna go counterclockwise. If you're left handed you're gonna leave it just like you see it here. Okay, so what I want to do is just switch it positions because what I want to do because I'm right handed I want this yarn always to coming in from the left hand side feeding into the project. So as I rotate this rectangle I'm always gonna go in the same direction. So to get started in this concept I want you to start with the second loop in. So ignore the one with the clothespin and go to the second and grab the next available loop and just feed it from the behind pulling up forward. And I want to do that for each one of these loops. If you're familiar with easy knitting then this is a really cool concept and you already know what you're doing. So you're going across as if it's a regular row. But what we're gonna do is that when we get to the end of the row we're gonna turn around and we're gonna be using the same row that I'm currently in once again to go down the other side. So just going right to the end 
Now originally I did these without the stitch markers and it was so much harder. So I wanna make it easier for you and also easier for me to teach it. So once you get it all the way, just pull up these loops so that they're nice and organized. And the next one here is the corner. So to do the corners, you're always, whenever there's a stitch marker or a clothespin, you're always gonna put three loops. So stack the loops. So one, two, and three. Now you can stack so that it's one, two, three. It doesn't matter. It's whatever you find easier. I just find it's easier to stack one, two, three, like that. So the next one that's available, release the stitch marker and put the next loop, all three of those, through that front one. But before you let it go, just kind of pull on it a little bit and you're gonna notice that it's gonna stay in a certain order. It's always gonna be one, two, and three. I want you to move the stitch marker to the first one. This is not like the square where the middle one here in this round is your corner. Okay? And then I want you to put in the third one another clothespin. These are your new corners. And I want you to rotate the project like so. And get that next loop ready so that you can understand this concept. So because I now need to go back, I haven't gone all the way around, I want to pay attention to these stitch markers. So this is a corner, this is a side and corner. So I wanna come to the one that is, is down the middle. And what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna take the next available one and I'm gonna feed it through the same loop that this one came through. So just coming up and just under not under side of it and just feeding it through that first loop and pull it towards the top. Okay, so there's technically two loops coming out of one here in the middle. And what I want to do is I wanna do that all the way down. So just grab the next one. I know it's kinda hard to see but it's there and it might be easier for you to see in person. Just feed it so that they're both coming through the same loop. Now when I did the prototype I changed the color so I could see it just to understand my concept a little bit easier and I'm just sharing that middle loop with two. Later on in this video, I'm going to show you how if you have a twist in your loops and they're not twisting right, I can show you how to fix it without having to take apart your project too. And I'm also gonna show you just in case you drop your loops, um, how to fix that as well. So you're coming all the way down, feeding the loops through the same loop. It's the only time you're gonna do that. You have to get yourself started in the center of your rectangle. So you're coming out to the very end. So here we've got it and the next one is a stitch marker. So whenever you have a stitch marker, let me back up the camera a little bit here and what you're going to notice whenever there's a stitch marker, there's always gonna be three. So the next three available to you, stack them. So one, two and three. Get that one stitch marker released, feed it back to the front and then open it up. Okay, and they stay in a certain order. So because this is a rectangle and it's the first time around, put a stitch marker on the, fir on the first one of the three and move this other stitch marker to the third one, leaving the one in the middle empty. This is the only time that you're going to consider it like that. From now going forward, every time there's a stitch marker and we're gonna move it, we'll always move it to the middle one of the three, but I won't complicate you yet. So rotate your project. And now we're gonna continue back. So we're gonna go in a continuous revolution around. So there's actually no ending to this. So at the very end of the project when you run out of yarn, you just bind off and it still looks good. So just with your next loop that's available to you, just feed them. So every loop just gets one now going all the way across. So the hard work technically has been done. And all you're just looking for is the loops in order. So the next loop is a stitch marker. Okay, so whenever there's a stitch marker there will always be three. So I'm gonna release it first and then stack three. So one, two, and three. And in that one that will have the stitch marker put in three. So now going forward 
the middle one of the three. So just splay it open. So the one, two and three, it's always gonna be the middle one. It'll always be the second one going forward from this point onward. Rotate your project a little bit. Now you do have your item here. So don't confuse that these loops that are going to your yarn strand are part of your project. So make sure that every loop gets something. If you're gonna drop a loop, it'll always be on a corner from my experience. So the next one here is a stitch marker. So just let's release it. Okay. And then stack it. So one, two and three because it's a stitch marker to always have three and pull three through and open it and you have the three. So one, two and three and it's always gonna be the second one now going forward and rotate your project. So down the long sections here you're going to notice that you'll change the yarn or like you'll change these a lot less therefore you'll speed up. Okay so working your way down. So all you just need to do now is go in a continuous revolution till you get to the size that you would like to go. A baby blanket in the square two balls would take you 32 by 32. I'm not sure the counts for doing different sizes of blankets at this point. This at this time is just concept. But if somebody can get back to me on that that would be super awesome. And you're gonna go all the way to the end. And then the end let's just rotate. I'm just gonna move out the camera a little bit further. So because there's a stitch marker, stack it. So one, two and three. Do you sa see how important those stitch markers are? It just allows you to keep track and then once you get it all three in there just splay it open and it's always the middle one of the three. And then just work your way across. Now because it's uh, going across at this particular point you will see that there is another loop in there. So just look for it. So the ones that are by themselves those are part of the three. So you're thinking they're out of place but they're not. So every time that you do a corner you'll always have two that are standing on its own because they're getting ready for the next round to be in position. So the next one is a stitch marker. So stack in three. So one, two and three and so on. So I know this is long winded. The concept is neat. I came up with it on the airplane and I tried it at home and it works like a gem and it can be really quite awesome. So all you just need to do is just go. So what I'm gonna do now is that I'm gonna take you to the square video. I'm gonna show you how to correct it just in case you're having any twists. I'm gonna show you how to correct just in case you leave any loops in behind the work that you should have picked up. I'm gonna show you how to correct that without having to take it all apart. I'm also going to show you how to fasten off and weave in your ends. So hopefully you enjoy this concept and I'm gonna fast forward you to that video now. Please enjoy and we'll talk to you again real soon. So let's review on how to fix a twist. So for example what you're seeing here everything is perfect and everything is looking aligned. Do you see how the two follow up all the way to the top of the loop? Now if there was a twist to it it would not look the same. So let's put a twist in here and let me show you how to fix that. So I'm back and I officially put in a twist here. So you can see that it doesn't kind of look right and it, you can happen to see this in a project if you're working along. So instead of taking everything apart you can work straight down. So let me show you how to get there. So all you just need to do is just take this loop and just follow it straight up the path and the nice thing about this you can do this at any point in this project and you just want to take all the loops out that exist to get to that twist. So here is the twisted one right here. So what you wanna do is untwist it and pull it out so it's not twisted and then you're just gonna take the strand and reapply it back up to the top. That's how easy that is. So instead of having to take apart all your work you can just simply just go back to where it was and just bring it back to conclusion so it's the same all the way up. So what happens if you have a particular uh, loop that you skipped. Let's talk about that next. So when I turned it over I noticed that I left this loop. So this is not intentional for the tutorial reason. I just happened to do that. Anytime that I did do that though I ended up doing that close to a corner. So I noticed that. So what you have to turn this around once in a while like pretty just double check and make sure you get all the loops. Now instead of frogging it to catch that loop what I can do is just kind of look at it and see where does this line up 
to go back up to the top. So you notice that it's facing in that direction. So I noticed that I have to go this way. So if it was facing this direction naturally then I would go this direction. So what I want to do is just look at where I'm gonna follow. So just follow it straight up and start releasing out the loops all the way to that level. I find it easier just to look at it from the front side to undo the loops just keeping an eye on where it's gonna go on the back side. So just going all the way down to where it is. So now that I'm all the way down okay so here's where I accidentally skipped it. So what I wanna do is put the two together just like normal. So just put it together. You're gonna treat them as one. So just turning it back over. Push it two to the front side. Okay keep it together and now just redo your stitches using them both. So put this next one through both and then put the next one through the next and all the way back to the top. So now that I'm on the top I can turn it over. My missing loop is now gone and let's turn it around and let's look at the front side. Okay do you see where it is? It's right around here somewhere. So it may look a little askew but it's better than leaving an exposed loop in behind. And uh, actually it looks pretty awesome once you just start shaping everything out and it's a great way to cheat the system without having to frog your work. So as we begin to do the bind off I want you to just take a look at your project. Make sure that there's no twisting or mistakes in it because now that we're gonna do the bind off is that it's gonna be permanently sealed into position. So make sure you do that first and then I'm gonna show you how to do the bind off next. What I've done is that I've gone through two balls and I'm just gonna leave the last section. I don't wanna turn the corner here because I don't have enough yarn to get around the corner. So what I'm going to do is that I'm gonna open up these loops. So let's just zoom in here and show you how that's done. So when I open them up I wanna put my scissors and turn it upside down so it looks like horseshoes that are upside down. And if I glide in my scissors really carefully I can catch the string that forms the loop. So it doesn't break the yarn at all. It just breaks the loop. And what I want to do is open up these final and I wanna use this as my final strand. If you were going to do it um, you just need a minimum of three loops but because I didn't wanna turn a corner for the last one and it's just a personal preference this is I'm opening up everything that was left. So now that that's open I wanna start my binding off. So what you want to do is you wanna work in the direction that is opposite to how you were putting it together. So for myself being right handed I worked in a counterclockwise uh, position. If you're left handed you were working in a clockwise. So because I'm right handed I'm going to go total of clockwise. Okay so I was, I was knitting counterclockwise. I'm gonna bind off counterclockwise and then left it's the opposite. So take the last one that you did and then take the new one and just form it up on the inside like this. Okay, so inside the loop and, and bend it over. Okay, and then grab the next one and I'm working counterclockwise because I, or sorry, I'm working clockwise because I'm right handed. And all I'm just going to do is that I'm gonna work all the way around putting the loops into each other. And now in the corners I'm gonna get there in just a moment and I'll show you what I'm gonna do with that. There's nothing special there. So I'm working my way to the corner. I still have my stitch marker in place with my clothespin and all I wanna do is just uh, be conscious of that and make sure that I get all of the loops when I'm turning the corner. So we're not adding anything to the corners any longer. We're just simply just gonna go around the corner. So you can remove this off. Make sure you expose all of your loops. You're gonna have three that are kind of untouched and you're gonna work those around feeding them into each other. So that gives you the extra that you need in order to turn a corner properly. Okay and then continue then around and that's it. So go all the way around and I'll see you at the end of this round and I'll show you how to finish off. So I'm coming back to where I had started and I've gone all the way around doing my bind off and just making sure I'm getting everything in. My last section here and my last loop. Okay. So you're noticing that you got a loop left over. So what you have to do is that you have to get a tapestry needle and one that will fit this yarn. This is nice and thick so you need a nice thick um, needle. I can feel the so just slide the yarn into the tapestry needle and what I want you to do is capture that loop 
okay and then pull it close okay and then sinking in underneath the the stitch work capture it in it's a nice yarn to be able to hide stuff and then going in the other direction so the idea is to get this to go back and forth inside the stitch work. You gotta go in a slightly different path each time to capture it in so it will not follow it on you. And you can pull on it and it's good to go. So then that knot is done. So what I want to do is that I want to go back through the afghan or the blanket and I have joined yarn. So I just happen to turn over it happens to be right there. So this is where it's been tied. So what you wanna do is you wanna take that same tapestry needle and you wanna stay towards the back of the project and just uh, because my needle's so long I wanna sink it into my work first. Okay. And then just put the end or just do one at a time. It's just easier. Put the end through. And you, what you wanna do is you wanna drag it through that stitch work. You could have done this as you went as well. It does, you don't have to necessarily wait to the end. Okay, so I did one. And the other one is right there. So again, I wanna just go in the other direction with the other one. Just sinking it in. Try not hitting that front side of the project. Just stay towards the back because then you won't mess with the, 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 the look of it. It's really quite thick yarn so just pull things through. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a long, you're gonna have a longer strand because by the time I gave you the advice you would have had a longer strand. So once you have it pulled through you can trim and trim. Ultimately if you can go back and forth three times it hides it even better and therefore your project's good to go. So. <laughs>